Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. I am right on the Balboa Pier today. We're going to talk about some of the national news. Uh, we're going to cover what's new with EIDL, PPP, and the restaurant grant program. Before I do, please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this with all your friends and colleagues, and uh, let's get into it. The story that just won't die is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is down in the 30,000 range again, and you're seeing it drop from its high of the low 60s down to 30,000. Again, in the last day, it's gone down, what, almost $10,000? How is this a safe haven investment? How are people putting money into this? And, oh, it's fantastic. It's, it's gonna be around forever. It has not been tested. None of the experts have said it's been tested. There is no way for this thing uh, to be a safe haven investment right now. I just don't see it. We've got a big week for news on the economy and uh, out of a group called the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which sounds like the most boring group on the planet, which it probably is, uh, they're going to announce inflation numbers for the month of April. Uh, what they're talking about is three and a half percent, which is if it meets that, if their expectations are met, it's the highest number since 2008, which means impending doom, ladies and gentlemen. So if you think that these numbers are just going to be fine and we're all going to get through this okay, you're kidding yourself. And again, you go buy gas, you go buy food, you go buy any natural resource of any kind and it is through the roof right now. Everything's up, but Bitcoin is down. So I think that you're going to see this number go through the roof this week. And uh, I think that the, uh, their analysis of the three and a half percent is gonna be low. So that's coming at the end of the week. It'll be interesting to see what it comes out. Tell me what you think about inflation. Let me know. Here's an interesting stat, and that is there are 29 states right now that have actually taken in more money since the pandemic than pre-pandemic, which when you think about it, it's crazy. You look at certain states that have uh, tourism as their main uh, uh, mode of, uh, of revenue, which is uh, places like Nevada and places like uh, Hawaii, here in California as well. Uh, you know, these places have taken a huge hit over the last year. Now, when you think about it, 29 states have more money right now than they had prior to the pandemic. So what a lot of these states are going to do is they're going to issue uh, different tax credits and tax refunds. Now, I don't know where this money is coming from. Is it is it all the uh, uh, stimulus money? Who knows? But uh, some of these states are going to give out different uh, uh, incentives and different tax refunds. I've told you about California in the past with the $600 to $1,400. You've got Idaho that's going to give out, uh, they've got a $500 million surplus. They're going to give out a whopping $50 per person or 9% of what you owe the state, which is kind of cool when you think about this. These people that have paid all this money in state taxes, they're going to get it refunded to them. And then you look at places like Montana. Now, Montana is going to do something that's not the greatest thing because they're just going to give you a, a tax discount, and uh, which means you've got to make money to pay the taxes to get the discount. Okay? Uh, there are other states out there that are giving uh, different refunds, and uh, these are going to be announced weekly right now. So get ready, wait and see. Now, another state that's going to offer this uh, refund or tax rebate is North Carolina. North Carolina is going to give out $500 per person if you made under $30,000 a year. If you're an individual and you made under $15,000, you're going to get the same thing. So. Not a lot of money, but uh, it's better than nothing. So for lower income earners, there's gonna be uh, more money out there for them. Um, again, share if your state's uh, participating in any program like this. Even in this wealthy enclave of Southern California, you've got people camping and living on the beach right here. It's crazy because I don't know how they can do this, okay?
everybody is going about their lives and acting like it's no big deal and they're just immune to this as this guy is passed out on the street. So it's everywhere guys. It's not just your community, the bad communities, it's absolutely everywhere. Now one more thing that came out of the latest stimulus package is an additional $6 billion in rental assistance that has been released by the Biden administration. Now, one thing that's interesting about this is that there is now $45 billion that has been issued for rental assistance uh, since all this started. Uh, there is still just about $30 billion that has not been spent. If you guys want to get this, take advantage of it now because it's going to be gone soon. It is estimated that one in seven people have not paid their rent during this time and are behind. So that's just what we know, okay? And I, I think the number is much bigger than that. I think that you're gonna find out that, uh, what if it's two and seven? What if it's three and seven? I, I think that uh, the number is gonna be much, much larger as uh, this unfolds. So right now you've got the opportunity to go out and uh, take advantage of this money now over later. One thing that needs to be addressed is the economic injury disaster loan. The EIDL program was set up so that small businesses could get loans at a reduced rate of 3.75% interest as a result of the pandemic. And the SBA has changed it over and over and over again. They now have a targeted grant program where businesses can get an additional $5,000 in addition to the $10,000. And it's created real problems and the problem is that based on uh, the area that you live in is determined if you get the grant or not. And the problem with that is you have people that have a business that the area is determined to be a low income area, but across the street, it's a gated community. That's determined to be okay in a low income area. This makes no sense. It has created nothing but problems with people. Uh, the thing about this is that the SBA has told me if we send the letter out to people for the targeted grant, they're eligible and they should qualify. It's not the case. There are tens of thousands of businesses that have been turned down from the EIDL grant program. And what this is going to do is create nothing but lawsuits. It has created busy work for the SBA. And also in regards to the new restaurant grant, the restaurant grant program has been rife with problems. There's lawsuits and there is litigation coming from the restaurant program. And uh, it's interesting because somebody filed a um, restraining order because he thought it was not fair that his business who he pre-qualified, did all the paperwork in advance, and Mr. Greer went out and applied, but he's not a woman and he doesn't meet the low income threshold, but the guy lost, you know, a million dollars in business basically, and uh, he's not eligible for this grant. So, you know, take a look at this restraining order that he filed, temporary restraining order. And uh, I think it's fascinating, but I think you're gonna see more and more litigation from individuals like this. Take a look at this. Here it is. This is the temporary restraining order and this was granted. So Philip Greer uh, owns a place called Greer's Ranch Cafe and he's lost $100,000 in business. And uh, he said it's not fair that uh, he's not in a low income area. Uh, he doesn't uh, qualify as a minority or a woman. And uh, he wants to be included in this uh, restaurant grant. So I'll leave the details below. You guys can take a look at it. But I mean, you know, it's 18 pages. It's worth reading. But here's the conclusion, you know, um, concludes that the planets have met the burden of proving all forever elements for a temporary restraining order. That, you guys, that is crazy. Okay. So it can happen, guys. Get ready because there's going to be a ton more litigation. Now, the Labor Department this week just announced that they are ending the uh, extended pandemic unemployment. And uh, it's already 22 states that have added this. It's more. Uh, again, the estimate is the end of June and it'll all be over with. Some people are saying it could go 
to the middle of July, but you're seeing this end. Now, three more states have added incentives to hire people, and that is Arizona, Montana, and Connecticut. Arizona, two grand if you get a job. Montana, $1,000 if you get a job. And Connecticut, they're gonna pay you $1,000 if you get a job. So you're gonna see more and more of this right now with these incentive programs to get people back to work as they eliminate this. And again, I, I think that it's just a matter of time until uh, uh, everything is caught up and every state is not gonna have the additional pandemic unemployment. Again, share your thoughts. People get upset over this. And it leads to my next topic, which is the uh, universal health care. Uh, there is a group of senators that issued a letter to the president saying that they want uh, these programs continued. And I'll show you guys this letter. It's signed by uh, seven congressmen. I said senators, uh, seven people in Congress. And uh, it's interesting because this is going to end. And uh, you can beg till the cows come home, but uh, you're going to find out that these programs are going to be done. And, uh, uh, you know, again, share your thoughts and what you think is going to happen with all this. But let's take a look at the letter first. Now, here's the letter that the congressmen and women sent President Biden. And it talks about two forms of payments that work in tandem, which is the UI and the direct payments to people. And the combination will help keep 12 million people out of poverty and uh, direct payments of $1,400. So here's everybody that signed it. Here's everybody that's involved in it. And uh, it will be interesting to see if this goes anywhere. Definitely a tourist part of town. You can rent boats, got all the shops. It's nice to see everybody out and about again. This is the auto ferry right here that gets you from here to Balboa Island. And uh, fun, slow. You can take your bikes and go across on the ferry. And then the line of cars to go on the ferry. The last thing I want to talk about today is the PPP loan. Uh, the PPP loan is basically out of money. With that being said, there is still about $5 billion left of funding that's available. You're going to have to search for banks that will take your application right now. Uh, if you have an outstanding application with someone uh, and it has not been fully approved yet, tell them to cancel the application so that you can take it to another lender and get approved. With that being said, there's a lot of preposterous things that are happening with the PPP loan. First of all, uh, Bank of America, wonderful Bank of America, has decided to change the rules for PPP loans and PPP forgiveness. Uh, they have come up with their own guidelines and made it very difficult for people to get approved for some of the loans and some of the lower income areas, which is completely impossible. Now, first things first, if you're trying to get forgiveness on your own, you're a fool. You need to have an accountant or have someone that knows how to do this so that you're not going to be caught holding the bag and be caught having to pay this loan back. The idea of getting a loan like this is that it was going to be completely forgivable and a lot of people got $20,000 loans for themselves and need to have it uh, forgiven. So again, if you got 20 grand, uh, why wouldn't you hire a professional? What's it worth? 200 bucks, 300 bucks? 500 bucks to pay somebody to make sure your loan's forgiven. Um, I don't think there's enough money to talk me out of doing that. Um, the other thing is there has been such a rampant amount of fraud with the PPP loans. And what we're gonna learn a year from now is that all these people that were denied, uh, you're gonna see more and more fraud that's been uncovered. Out of New Jersey, there is a rash of farms that got PPP loans. Now. New Jersey and farms, no, 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 coastal towns. You gotta hear this. The Ritter, Ritter Wheat Club, um, Tomato Cramber, Seawood uh, Blyman, okay, these are a few of them, plus Dealey Nuts, Dealey Nuts. These are all companies that got over 20 grand and don't exist. 
The only thing that would be better is if one of the companies would have been named D's Nuts and it would have been funny. But again, all these fake businesses that got PPP money that you're paying for. Don't ever forget that you're paying for this money and this money is uh, uh, out there and they've absconded with it and screwed us all out of it. So please don't forget to like the video, hit the share button, uh, hit the subscribe button, join our email list and uh, please share it with all your friends and colleagues. I will see you guys very soon. Thanks for being here and uh, I'll get back to you very quickly.